Okay, now that we know how to look at cells via the microscope, it's time to start getting into cells. What are they? How do they function? What do they do? Um, but in order for us to do that, we've got to uh, remember a, a key aspect here, this idea, this theory of cells. And it's very simple, uh, this theory. It states very much that all living things are composed, as we said, of cells. That was our rule we've said since day one. You've got to be made up of at least one cell or perhaps in the case of humans, 50, 60, 70 trillion cells. Uh, so that will, uh, that number will vary based on their size. Uh, and that the basic principle that cells are the unit of structure and function. That's the reason we're alive. It's actually where life begins. Because cells themselves, an individual cell, can do all of the required characteristics of life. And new cells only come from existing cells. They can't just spontaneously arise. That's actually something that we will look at uh, later on in, in the class. But uh, here's a, you can see a diagram of a, a cartoon diagram, but of a pretty complex uh, cell. This is actually is an animal cell, um, a little bit different from a plant cell. We'll see how later on. Um, but that no matter what, whether we're talking about an animal cell, a plant cell, uh, they've got to have three main parts. They have to have uh, a cell membrane, which is this, uh, here you see it referenced as a plasma membrane. It's this thin outer covering. Think uh, water balloon. It would be the balloon part. All of the filling and the stuff inside, uh, but you have to have that thin membrane, which we'll look at in uh, our next video, how that functions surrounding that. All cells must have that, both plant and animal cells, even uh, bacterial cells, which are prokaryotic. Um, in terms of ignoring now bacterial cells, but eukaryotic cells, uh, that um, and again as we stated that uh, a prokaryotic cell is a bacterium, um, and that's going to be a little bit different. Um, a prokaryote uh, does not have a nucleus. That would be a bacteria. They're very simple. You're not going to see these organelles that we can see here. Um, in bacterial cells. This guy is actually what we'd call a true or a eukaryotic cell. Just to clarify that, that's true for plant cells and animal cells are eukaryotic. Uh, bacterial cells are prokaryotic because they have no nucleus. Uh, you also will find that they have no other major organelles. Uh, other than ribosomes. So uh, just to clarify that point here, so using this guy as an example, uh, we can see that uh, quite honestly it has a cell membrane, it has a nucleus, and also they have to have uh, this filling in here. Uh, it, here it's labeled as cytosol, that's our cytoplasm. It's a watery uh, based filling with a lot of dissolved ions and solids in it. And think of these things as floating around inside of the cell. You can see it's pretty packed. There's not much room. But each, each of these structures here that we're going to look at are called uh, organelles. They're like little mini organs, like we would have a stomach. We have lungs. Those are major structures inside of us that have a job to do. Same thing holds true here. Each one of these structures has a major job. So that's our goal. We want to look at uh, the organelles and identify them and their functions. So to do that, Let's, let's take a look at these organelles. And, and remember, they're just like organs in your body, except these are within one singular cell. And this little L ending implies cute, they're like cute little tiny organs. Uh, so let's start to take a look at them, what they are and what they do, each one doing a specific job. Um, so to do that, we'll start with our what many people feel is the most important, and that is our nucleus we can see here. The nucleus is, uh, usually you'll identify that in cells as a large darkened spot inside of the cell. And it's the most important, sometimes people refer to that as quote unquote the brain of the cell. And that's mainly because it has, uh, it's where all of your DNA, all of your genes are located, your chromosomes are housed inside of this um, object. So it, it is pretty important. All the directions, all the instructions for how the cell is going to run are stored and housed in this. So the nucleus is super, super important. And that's in both plant and animal cells. We'll find it in both of them. Uh, like we said, it's like the boss. It controls what the cell is doing. So uh, with our nucleus there moving on uh, and having this guy, we want to back up then and, and go back and talk a tiny bit about that cell membrane. And we'll focus on this in particular in our next video. But quickly, just to touch on that, it's a very thin, flexible barrier that goes around the outside of all cells, both plant and animal cells. 
Um, and the key is it is flexible. You really want to think water balloon here, just like a water balloon um, would be squishy. You can change its shape, and it would return back to its shape. But it also can pop. We'll see. Will be some problems there. But its job really is to be like a barrier. And what we're going to see is that remember our from our biochemistry, it is made up of lipids. Um, so think fatty acid chains, large fat-like molecules almost. And um, its main job here, its function, is that it's going to be, uh, it's going to control what enters and exits the cell. Uh, for example, uh, sugar molecules have to get inside of the cell. For, they're going to be food. Remember our photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, they're going to have to have a way to pass through this membrane. Uh, at the same time, this cell membrane is also going to block some molecules from getting in. It'll keep uh, some molecules out. It'll also keep molecules in. So this barrier is, is very simple in what it's made up of. We'll see in our next video. But it has a very, very important job, and that is controlling what enters and exits the cell. Um, and, and the term for that we guess, is selectively permeable. It's going to pick and choose almost what can and cannot get across the cell itself. So uh, going forward, now we want to switch here. You can see this cell looks, <coughs> excuse me, a tiny bit different um, in that this is actually is uh, what we had mentioned before. The earlier cells we were looking at were animal cells. This represents a plant cell. So you can see it looks a little bit different. Um, and what we're focusing on here is uh, the cell wall. You can see it labeled here on its peeled back. It's this thick um, outer covering and it is very rigid, it's very hard, it's very firm, it's not flexible. And you'll only find that in plant cells. Um, that's going to act as, as uh, a barrier, it's going to help hold uh, the cell together. Interestingly enough, it will not be in charge of regulating what goes in and out of the cell. That is the cell membrane, or the plasma membrane we can see right here. It's a thin layer, but this is a thicker layer on the outside. Um, and it's only in plant cells and some bacteria. Um, a thick barrier, and notice it's made of cellulose. That should ring a bell, that os ending. What does that os ending mean? Remember, os, glucose fructose, sucrose, it's a sugar, a complex polysaccharide. So plants actually build their own cell walls. Um, and as we said, it's protection and support for the cell. Uh, help cells maintain their shape. Because remember, plant cells are not like humans. They're not going to have skeletons inside. They have to rely on these rigid, unflexible cell walls for support and protection. Uh, so moving back inside now, um, this is one we've mentioned before earlier with cellular respiration, mitochondria. And these are unique. Uh, they look, easiest way to describe them, look like kidney bean shaped organelles. And remember, it's their job to break down organic compounds like sugars primarily and turn them into energy. Uh, so we can see this kind of looks like a little kidney bean guy here. And they actually uh, have a lot of folded membranes in here. And what will happen is sugars will be processed and broken down with enzymes when they enter in. And in turn, that will uh, release energy out to the rest of the cell. So this is like the powerhouse of the cell. It's making energy for that. Um, and we can see, uh, backing up, looking at our animal cell again, this is in both plant and animal cells. Uh, all cells need to do cellular respiration. You can see that they're scattered all throughout, and they do look kidney bean shaped. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, is that uh, plant and animal cells will need these, but you're going to find them in different amounts, different concentrations. Cells that require a lot more energy uh, will have to have a higher concentration of mitochondria. Uh, and we'll be looking at that later in a lab. Uh, going on to a, a specific specified guy, this is one we've also seen before, chloroplasts. And we're going to go by color and shape here to identify them, little green disks. And it's their job. This is the organelle in plants that absorbs sunlight and undergoes. This is where our photosynthesis is happening. They're going to make food. They're going to generate sugar. So here is this uh, disk shaped. This is one entire chloroplast. You can see there are little stacks of membranes inside. Uh, but if we go back and look at our plant cell, you can see here, there's a chloroplast, there's a chloroplast. They only show three here, but they're actually usually much more numerous. And this is, again, what absorbs sunlight. This is what gives plants their green coloration as well. We'll be looking at those in a lab. Uh, this is perhaps the sketchiest one, but a very, very important one, endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, it's got nerdy, nerdy names here. We're going to go ahead and look at them. But um, essentially, the, the names in their simplest part, um, if we, we think about this, endo uh, simply just means inside. 
endoplasmic, referring to the cytoplasm, and reticulum really just simply means snaking back and forth like a snake. So you can see here in this, this is a rough ER, it's just a bunch of membranes that snake back and forth. And there are two kinds here. This is what's called rough endoplasmic reticulum because it's covered in tons and tons of little dots called ribosomes. We'll look at those in a second. And its job, uh, as we said over here, is to make proteins. Um, so this is a site of, or one of the sites of protein synthesis. And this will actually also allow molecules to be, um, as they're made, these proteins to be transported around and shipped out somewhere into the cell. Um, so that's our rough ER. There also is another uh, variety of endoplasmic reticulum, and that is our smooth ER. Its job, it doesn't have ribosomes, its job is to detoxify, to break down toxic materials, to repair cell membranes. Um, so we can see in here, here's uh, where their locations. Here's our nucleus. You can see the ER is kind of an extension of that nuclear membrane. These are covered in ribosomes. And then you go out into these, um, the smooth ER, which are extensions of those, and they look almost like tubes and channels where they're going to detoxify molecules, repair membranes, etc. Think channels moving around the cell. Uh, speaking of ribosomes, we got to hit these guys because they're super important. They are our tiniest organelle. We won't be able to see them in the microscope, but their job is simple. Make proteins. And interesting to note that we can find them uh, free-floating around. Here's a really, really close up. Uh, tiny, tiny. Look at the micrometer scale down here. These are a bunch of ribosomes in the process of building a protein. But if we look in the cell, we can see that they're attached to the rough ER. Some of them, though, like over in here, over out here, you do have them uh, up in here all over the cell. They're everywhere. Because remember, everything is because of proteins. So they're very, very important. And we'll look at those later on um, as well. A few more here, lysosomes. Lys means to break. Um, so these are only found in animal cells, and they're little vesicles, little tiny packets that contain enzymes. They're like the cleanup crew, uh, and we can see one here. It's going to be the lysosome's job, very simply, is to, we can see it in the process here. Here a cell is engulfing food. It fuses. The lysosomes actually fuse with it. They digest the food particles, and then they get rid of any waste products. Um, so they can be used to break down food. They can be used to, into more manageable forms, they can be used to break down waste products. Even damaged organelles can be uh, destroyed and broken down by these guys. So like it states, the cleanup crew of the cell. So we have a few more here really quickly. Uh, the strangest one that usually gives students the most trouble, uh, the Golgi apparatus. And this, again, is just a stack of flattened membranes we can see in the cell. We'll, we'll see in a moment. But its job, think, is processing and shipping. It's almost like a, uh, would be analogous to us saying that uh, this guy is sort of almost like uh, UPS or a mailing um, institution. They're going to receive packages from somewhere, and then they're going to um, process that change its shape and ship it off somewhere else. So you can see here your rough ER sending proteins via a transport vesicle. It's going to fuse with your Golgi apparatus and as it travels around through these membranes it's processed. It changes its shape, it sticks uh, maybe perhaps carbohydrates onto the protein, strips some stuff off, and then ships it somewhere else inside the cell or in this case the proteins get shipped outside of the cell. So think of this as a processing plant, a shipping factory. A uh, few more here, our last two, uh, vacuole, one word here, and it's very, very simple, um, storage. Um, they do exist in both um, plant and animal cells, but they're really going to be prevalent truly in plant cells. Very large uh, plant cells need a lot of water, so this is just a place to store excess water. Um, for the plant. Sometimes waste, sometimes salts, sometimes pigments, um, but think again storage. And our last one to look at quickly as we wrap up, just like in us, we have a skeleton of bone. Cells also have this matrix of fibers of proteins that are like a skeleton to help provide shape, um, help move stuff around in the shell, uh, help it to change shape. And there are two kinds here, microtubules, which are large thick tubes, like um, that will make tails, flagella, and cilia. Like here's a bacteria with what look like tails. Those are flagella, part of the cytoskeleton. Uh, paramecium has little hairs on him. So they do help to, to move um, as well. So we want to end by add up all these organelles, all these parts, and we're going to work with them. It's almost like the cell is like a factory. Everybody doing their job has one job to do. Every machine 
Collectively, the factory runs smoothly.